Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then subscribe and click on that bell icon and you'll get notified when I come out with new iOS tutorials. This is the last video that we have for saving activities. We're going to validate our data, which by now you'll see is super easy, and then we're going to save the new activity. Okay, now a lot of what we're going to do here should be becoming routine for you guys. We're just going to jump right in and create a save function in our model. Then we're going to use that new save function to save a new activity. And we're going to do some data validation to make sure we have all the data that we need. And then once that is done, we're going to show that new activity in the table view and make sure it falls under the correct day. All right, so let's get started. Okay, we are in our project and here's the window where we save the new activity. So what we wanna do is when they click save, we gotta first kind of figure out what data is required and what is optional. Now this picture view right here will represent all the days in their trip. And we can add activities to any of those days. So that's definitely required, but we don't really have to do any validation on it because in the previous, I think two videos ago, we don't even show this window if there's no days. So we don't really have to validate that. The buttons down here, there'll always be one selected. We have one that's selected by default. So we don't really have to do very much validation there to make sure that there's at least one activity selected. And we also have kind of like fail safe code in there too. So if, if there's a problem finding out which one's selected, it's gonna return the excursion activity, which is the one that's selected. So that's our default value. What we don't have validation for is this title, this text field right here, which is what are you doing? What's the activity? So that one is definitely required and we're gonna to have to do some validation. We're gonna to have to write some code for that. But that should be easy by now because we've already done this with a couple of text fields in the past. The description, that's optional. No validation required. If they don't want to add a description, no big deal. We'll save it anyway. So we have these three pieces of data that are gonna be required. Now, we don't have any function right now to save an activity in our model. If we look at our activity right here, you know, most of our other models, they have a, a function class that we create. And the activity doesn't have one. So we need to add a class that has all the functions for activities. So let's start first by creating this file, the activity functions, and we'll add one function to it, which is basically to create a new activity. Okay, and we'll just create the class. And then we want a function to create an activity. Now what I'll do is I'll cheat a little bit. I'll go to the day functions and I'm going to copy this function here and paste it in there. And then I'm going to update it for our needs here. So instead of days, we're going to add an activity. Wait, what'd that say? Create days. You know, that should really be singular. So hold on just a second. Let's redo that. And I'm just going to come here. When I see things like this, I want to update them right away so I don't forget later. So I'm just going to refactor and rename this. It really should be singular, you know, because we're just creating one day. Create day. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our activity functions. Now, do you remember kind of like our model, our layout of how everything is connected? We have a trip. Inside a trip, we have days. And inside of days, we have activities. So when we're adding an activity, we need to know two things. Which trip are you on and what day are you on? Now we have that first piece of information right here. We have the trip index, but what we don't have is we don't have an index to represent the day model. So we're going to need that. And you know, as you can see here, it kind of reads like create activity at this trip index using this day model. So we'll kind of follow that same convention how it reads. So we'll say create activity at trip index for this day, for day index, and that'll be an int, using, and it's not a day model, it's gonna be an activity model. And we'll just change this guy to activity model. There we go. So now when it comes time to saving it, we save it to the correct trip, then we wanna save it to the correct model, and for that, we'll need the correct day index. And then once we have that, we want to access the activity models. That's uh, not coming up. 
I should be able to access activity models from here. So just to make sure I have it correctly, since autocomplete isn't working, I'm going to hold down command. I'll go into day models and I actually want to go into day model and I want to access this activity models. So let's go back to navigate back. I'm holding down control command and using the left arrow. Okay. And then paste that in there. And then I want to append onto the activities model like we had before. And then what am I appending? Well, we're passing in the activity model here. So that's what I'm going to append. Okay, autocomplete wasn't working. So I just want to build and make sure everything still compiles. Yeah, it does. Okay, not sure why that autocomplete wasn't working there, but we got it working now. Okay, I have my create activity function. Now let's call this function from our add activity view controller. Okay, here's our save function here. So I'll just say activity functions. And it's a static function, right? So it should show up for us here. And this is the trip index. Now, if you remember, we passed in the trip index right here, as well as the trip model. Wait, did we? Let me just double check that because I'm starting to suspect that we, <laughs> we didn't pass that in. <laughs> Let's just double check. Okay, that was in the activities view controller right here. And right here, handle, add activity. Yeah, we didn't. Okay, so let's add that now. Need the trip index, which trip are we on? So here's how we got it last time. Now I could do this. I could copy that and paste it in there and that'll work fine. But what's the problem here? It's the dry principle, right? Don't repeat yourself. And we just repeated some code. So what do you do in this case when there's code being repeated? You want to extract it into a single function so it's not repeated. So let's extract this code. Okay, we should just be able to right click, refactor, and then extract method. There we go. And what do we want to call it? Well, let's make sure it's descriptive and say get trip index. All right. So now I'll just call that and replace it here. There we go. Okay, good. So we have our trip index now, and I feel better about that. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's delete this commented code too. I like to keep my code clean, you know? Okay, so we have the trip index. Now what we need, this is the day index, right? So we need a variable called day index like that. How do we get the day index? Well, we basically just wanna find out which day is selected in our picker view. So we can just say, let day index equal, and then we'll just access it from our picker view day perky view, and you just want to find out what the selected row is. And there's that word again, component. Which component? Remember, component is like the columns of scrollable rows in a picker view. We only have one component, so it's just going to be zero. Okay, so we have our trip index, our day index. Now we need an activity model. So let's just create that here. And now we have to populate our activity model. We'll do that right here. Let's create a new activity model. And what do we need here? We want that one. Okay, so the title, remember this is one of the pieces of data that was required. So I'm not gonna access that text field right away. I wanna validate it first and make sure there's actually data in it. So how do we validate text in a text field? So we've done this before, right? And one of the places we did is when we added a, a new trip. And let's take a look at that. So it's right here. You know, we just look at the text field, see if it has a value. And it's this has value function that we created where it checks to see if it has value. And if it doesn't, it puts a little warning icon in our text field for us. It lets the user know like, hey, I need a value. You need to enter something in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. And we can just paste that in right here. Of course, there's no trip text field. We want the title text field. And we can just say new title. So we'll copy that and we'll put it in right here. For the subtitle, 
we just access the text field directly because whether it has value or not, well, we don't care. Subtitle text field dot text. There we go. And for activity type, well, we already set that in the last video. So we could just grab that and just paste it in right there. All right, that should do it. That should add another activity for us. Okay, what's it saying here? Oh, if it's nil, we could just supply a uh, empty string. Okay, let's delete that and supply an empty string there. All right, great. So that should work. Now there is something missing. The activities view controller, which called this, we need to notify them when we're done adding a new activity so the activity view controller can show that new activity in the table view. And how do we do that? Or how have we done that in the past? Well, we use a callback method, but we don't have any mechanism to show it in the table view. So let's just make sure it works right now. Okay, go into Bali, add a new activity. I'm just going to add it to the first day. And we'll just say here, new activity and save it. And nothing happens. It should show up right under this uh, LAX entry right here. But if we come back and go back in, you'll notice it shows up right here. So it's fine, the data is getting added, but the table view isn't updating. So when we added days, how do we update the table view? Well, if you remember from that video, we want to limit the amount of data transactions that go to the remote server and back. So right now, when we save the activity model, this in essence will be saving to your data store. It might be local or it might be remote and that call is needed. But what we don't wanna do, we don't wanna just call reload data on the table view because that will go out to your data store. And if it is remote, and if it is a data store like Firestore or Firebase, you're gonna get charged for that transaction. And it's gonna pull back data. And you know, you're know you reloading a whole table view, which could have hundreds of entries, but you only really need just one, right? So we're gonna skip that transaction altogether. And we're just gonna update one entry. So let's take a look at our activities view controller. And right here, this is where we handle add activity. So take a look at how we did it with days. When we're done saving, all we do is we get back the day model and then we inserted it into the table using this insert sections. Well, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're not gonna insert a section. We're going to insert a row. So let's start building that out. Uh, and first of all, we need a done saving. Okay, so let me hold on command. I'll go into here and you know, I'm going to copy this. And we'll go into our activity model and we're gonna paste that in here. And we're not gonna return a day model, we're gonna return an activity model. And we'll call it down here. So after we're done creating an activity, we'll just call the done. So first I wanna make sure that this done saving actually has a value or a function attached to it, and then we'll call it that function. And then we want to pass in, well, activity model actually. So we'll pass in the activity model which is this guy right here. All right, that's good. So now that we have that, let's go back to our activities view controller and we're going to do something like this right here. Okay, done saving. And we're going to get back an activity model. Okay, we can keep that. Now here, what it's doing here basically is we're updating the local trip model that's already populated. Instead of making a call to the remote data source, we're going to update its local data store that's being used to populate that table view. So really what we're going to do here, and remember this trip model, this is a local variable right here. So we want to insert our new activity into the correct day. And that's going to look kind of like our activities function, right? Where we access the correct trip model. In this case, there's only one trip model, so we don't really have to do this. But we want to access the correct day model and then append it to the activities model. So let me just copy this. And again, I'm holding down command control and then hitting the arrow key. And instead of this, let's just paste that. We're taking this activity model, we're appending it to the activities model here. Doesn't know what a day index is. Okay, this is fine, but we don't have a day index. We don't know which day we're on. We don't have any variables here that where we can get the day index. So we're gonna have to pass the day index back as well. So let me copy that. 
And let's just put it here because we want to get a day index and the activity model back. But the done saving isn't configured to do that. So let's go back into our done saving. And let's configure that so it passes back an index as well as an activity model. I'm going to hold down command and I'll skip to it. Oh, wait, this isn't right. This is the add day. Why did it take me here? It should have taken me to the add activity view controller done saving. Wow, that's really strange. Okay, so let's just go into the add activity view controller. <laughs> I don't know why it did that. And instead of just passing back the activity model, we'll also pass back an integer. And now this shows it doesn't work. That's okay. We'll just grab that day index here. And remember the day index is just coming from the picker view. And we'll pass back two of those values. So now if I go back to the activities view controller, we have a day index and that should work right there. So let's compile it, make sure that error goes away. All right, good. So we no longer have an error on, on this part up here or this part. Oh, okay, you know, we don't really need this, this line right here for what we're doing. And remember, we're not inserting a section. We want to insert a row. So let's see what that looks like. You know, there's insert rows on here. Yeah, right here, In insert rows. Okay, it's looking for an index path, an array of index paths. We only have one index path. So let's create that index path. Index path, that one right there. And really, we want this one here, row and section, that's for a table. Item, section, that's for a collection view. So row and section. All right, so the row, you know, where in the section, or where in that day should I insert this? I kind of just want to add it to the end. I want to append it to the end. Reordering the activities, that's going to be in a later video. I'm going to show you how to do that in a later video. So I've added the activity model to the trip model. So I could just find out now what the count is and just subtract one if I wanted to. So let's do that. Let's uh, create a row variable. And I'm just going to get the activity models here, get the count, and subtract one. And that will give me the row that I'm on. So I'll just hit. Insert row there. Uh, what does this say right here? Yeah, I know I have activity models because I just added one on the line before. So <laughs> I'm going to fix this one with an exclamation point. And then I also need the which section I'm on. And this is really the day index because each day is a section on the table view. All right, good. So I have my index path. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it right here. That's my index path. Okay, now for row animation, usually I, I think I just went with automatic last time. So let's do that again. Yeah, automatic. Okay, let's test it now and see how it works. Okay, now remember, I'm going to add an activity and it should show up under this LAX entry. February 9th, I'll just leave it as an excursion. New activity. All right, great. So it looks like everything's working fine. Now, We'll just do another test just to make sure. Let's see, what is this? February 12th. Let's add another entry to February 12th. And we'll make it a hotel. Now, it'll probably help if I actually change it to February 12th. <laughs> and there it is. It inserts just fine. And it uses the right icon. Okay, so it looks good. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you're following along, it might have been kind of complicated because we did cover this earlier. And we kind of went through it kind of fast here. So if you need to review, please take your time. Go back to the earlier videos, rewatch those, and make sure you really get what's going on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to help out this video and my channel, then you can provide a translation for the, just the title and the description. And that'll help people who speak your language find this video more easily. So thanks a lot, guys. And keep climbing that big mountain to be a great developer.